Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Firas Shirari. Um, this is going to be the second video in the series of the um, A211AX um, training videos. Um, so today we're going to talk about the AC versus AX. Uh, what we, we're going to look at what have stayed the same and what have changed uh, moving from the Wi-Fi 5, the, you know, the commercial uh, name for the uh, A211AC to the Wi-Fi A211AX, which is the Wi-Fi 6. Okay, so spectrum-wise, so spectrum-wise, nothing really changed. Um, Wi-Fi 6 used to, uh, Wi-Fi 5 or AC used to support 20, 40, 80, and 160 um, uh, megahertz bandwidth channels. Um, we have the same as well on AX, so nothing a lot changed here. Uh, we have 20, 40, um, 80, and you know all the way up to 160 supported. Um, all of DMA constellation order. So this is where we get a little bit of change. So um, in AC, we supported up to MCS9, which should have presented uh, 256 QAM modulation. Um, that meant that like you were sending eight bits per subcarrier. In the um, uh, in the AX that has been upgraded to 1024 QAM. That means that um, you know from um, you're sending 10 bits. So it's not a lot of change here, um, not a lot of addition, and and that is also actually one of the things that HE is more about efficiency than uh, about throughput. Um, there is not a lot of uh, changes when it comes to the. Um, um, parameters or the factors that actually contribute to uh, achieving very high throughputs. Um, the other diff uh, significant difference, uh, and a significant difference is the OFDM symbol duration. So the symbol duration is the, um, the time of uh, the time of transmission. So in the uh, in the AC standard, it was 3.2. So this is the actual um, um, time of transmission that has um, new information. Of course, you still need to add the, the guard interval, which is a cyclic uh, a prefix. Um, so basically, you just take uh, the last part of the um, the whatever you're sending, and you copy that, and you add it to the uh, um, uh, to your uh, to your symbol um, to fight um, um, intersymbol interference. Um, here in AX with the AX now that is being quadrupled. So we're, we went from 3.2 to uh, 12.8, and and that has actually happened because of the uh, change in the spacing between the subcarriers. Uh, we'll we'll touch on that on the next slide. But but for now, we'll, all we need to know is that um, that time for um, um, a fr um, um, frame has, um, uh, sorry, the time for uh, the OFDMA symbol has increased by, you know, uh, by quadruple, being um, uh, quadrupled. Okay, so the OFDMA uh, guard interval, as I touched on, the OFDMA uh, guard, um, it's basically um, um, protection against intersymbol interference. And it's, uh, if you look at it, it's actually more like a waste of the transmission time. So like during um, like AC, like you could be uh, with, um, you know, the, uh, the long guard interval, like the 0.8, you would be um, wasting all, you would be wasting 20% 25% of your like uh, of your transmission time. So it's like you're actually transmitting data through only 75 and what is the rest of the transmission time is just basically a redundancy where you are repeating, um, uh, there's no new information there. Uh, with the 2.4, the short guard interval, that goes down to 12.5. Um, if you look at if you look at the uh, the AX now we have we have um, we have different um, 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 guard intervals so uh, we have the 0.8 as the uh, the shortest one then we have 1.6 and we have a 3.2 microsecond even though the 0.8 is um, is higher than the 0.4 is is longer than the 0.4 but we're actually saving on the on the amount of time we waste by using a cyclic uh, uh, um, uh, a prefix uh, guard interval because basically a 0.8 um, uh, as a percentage from the total 
12.8 microsecond um, uh, uh, of DMA symbol um, is a 6. Point, uh, I believe 6.25 uh, or something. It, it's around 6%. It's around 6% um, of the of the transmission time. So it's like we're actually saving almost 50% comparing to the short integral, uh, short guard interval from the uh, previous standard. Um, okay, um, MIMO order, like, you know, M N came with like a 4x4, four four, AC up to 8x8, eight eight. Um, in you know, AX is still the same, it's like as AC, it's all, it's all the way up to 8x8, eight eight. and um, there's really no real client with like 8 um, antennas, so basically you're talking about like a 2x2 two two clients that you multi-user you do downlink multi-user MIMO or in the AX you do uplink multi-user MIMO too but I mean with eight antennas you are supposed or let's say with let's be specific and say with eight um, transceivers and eight antennas you should be able to support eight spatial streams uh, so maximal like data rates this is like a theoretical maximum data rate when you when um, if you're doing like MCS 9 like short guard interval um, 8 by 8 um, 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 spatial streams 8 spatial streams and a 160 mega megabit per second uh, oh sorry a 160 gigahertz a megahertz uh, channel bandwidth you should be able to achieve around six uh, seven gigabit per second with AC um, that has increased a little bit with AX to 9.6. So um, not a lot of increase, not a lot of um, you know increase here, increasing here over um, the legacy. Since if we look at the difference, uh, the jump from N to AC, like the the highest uh, theoretical rate supported in A in N was six six hundred megabit per second. Uh, you're talking about a four by four MCS seven uh with a 40 megahertz channel um that jumped like over 10 times so ac is like almost 10 times more than what you could do with n so we're talking like 7 gigabit per second compared to a 600 megabit per second what you can see here we only like moved from 7 gigabit per second to almost 9.6 gigabit per second Okay, channel access. I mean, channel access has been the same since the dawn of Wi-Fi. It has been always, um, you know, carrier sensing multiple access with collision avoidance. Um, but now we have a new access method. It's all DMA, but it's still on top of CSMA. And we'll, we'll, we'll take a, um, um, a deeper look at that in the upcoming videos. Uh, we will talk about how the AB um, you know, um, set the ground for all of DMA by using CSMA and to um, reserve the channel to do all of DMA, whether it's uplink or downlink. Uh, a random, a random channel access, we have the, you know, DCF and we have the enhanced uh, distribution channel access, the, you know, the upgraded version of the, DC, uh, of the DCF. Now uh, we have uh, we have uplink uh, all of DMA random access on top of um, CSMA. Even though I haven't seen that implemented, so um, I don't have a lot of um, you know experience with um, how does that behave and how it affects the whole environment. Uh, but nonetheless, it's part of the standard. Uh, contention free access we have PCF HCC there then uh, HCCCA they've never really been um, implemented they're part of the standard but never been implemented uh, now we have uh, trigger based uplink uh, of DMA where the AB takes control of the environment and schedule when the clients can access and who can transmit and when uh, MU technology, like with AC, we had like MU, uh, multi-user MIMO technologies, and basically it was only like downlink. Uh, now we have multi-user MIMO and all DMA. Um, uh, now, like I said, we only had uh, downlink multi-user MIMO. Here we actually have downlink and uplink multi-user MIMO, and also you can do multi-user MIMO on top of all DMA as well. So there is... Um, um, uh, we have it, there's actually three um, uh, multi-user technologies and um, all multi-users options in in AX. So you can do off DMA alone, you can do multi-user MIMO alone, downlink or uplink, or you can do a combination of both. 
Uh, I haven't seen also, I haven't seen that implemented yet. I would, I would suggest that, um, that would be more of like a wave two, I believe. Uh, but I, I even can think of um, a scenario when you react, where you actually want to use both of them, um, like multi-user MIMO on top of all of DMA. Um, but yeah, if anyone can think of um, um, a case, uh, use case for that, please let me know. Um, okay, so fragmentation. Fragmentation was a static fragmentation. It was mainly used um, as a protection mechanism uh, to um, help avoid, um, uh, you know, lower lower collisions. Uh, so you fragment, you you know, uh, you fragment your load so it will be shorter or smaller and will take, um, you know, um, shorter time to be transmitted. And in that case, what that that will lower your, um, you know, chances of collision, right? Um, here, actually, um, the fragmentation is flexible, and there are multiple levels of um, of fragmentation, and it's even like allowed during aggregation, which was not part of the the A811 AC. So you can actually fragment a lot. Um, um, uh, a load, and actually, like you know, um, you don't have to. Um, um, if if the during a TXLV, if you don't have enough time to send a full frame, you can actually break the load into a fragment, uh, to a couple of fragments. Send one in this current um, TXLV and wait for them, you know, for the rest of it to be sent on the next one. Um, um, itchy le legacy fairness, so um, there was none um, during AC, uh, but here with the, uh, I mean, with the AX clients and having um, uh, the capability of doing all of DMA, now we have the option to actually um, uh, set a different um, uh, different types of uh, a different set of um, ADC parameters to uh, legacy clients and um, a different set of parameters for AX. And this is a very cool idea. I mean, if you look at the implementation, it is meant to kind of... Um, strike a balance, a balance between like, you know, legacy client accessing the channel and um, and having, you know, enough airtime um, uh, compared to like a the AX client where the AB would like them to be more controlled and to do all DMA instead of just trying to randomly access the channel. Um, so, so the AB will set the ADC parameters in a way that, you know, the the legacy client will still will still have a fair chance to compete for the medium, but the but the AX client will will not be able to, and they will just follow the AB scheduler when it comes to all of DMA. Uh, well, we'll touch on this uh, point a little bit more, in more details on the you know upcoming videos, but but for now this is like the the general idea. Um, and then OBSS uh, management, uh, we have like we have in the um, legacy in the AC AC we had we had um, you have you know we had NAV we have RTS CDS um, HCCA TXOP negotiation. Um, now we have two um, you know you know two important um, additions where like the two NAVs so the AB so the clients now can actually um, have two NAVs network um, allocation vector. One is for the intra A pieces and one for the inter uh, P uh, inter pieces. So one to um, you know up to be updated by um, uh, you know transmissions or frames um, within the um, the yeah, the native uh, pieces and another one have to be updated by other op by you know. OPSSs, other PSSs. Uh, the this 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 is a part of like the the whole um, um, uh, spatial reuse um, um, idea. So it's like having have uh, like knowing wh who is you know um, if a frame is a part of the um, um, uh, the the uh, the native uh, pieces or if it's, uh, you know, from other pieces, is also a part of the, you know, the, the power manage, the spatial reuse. Uh, so spatial reuse, sectorization reuse, sectorization in like AH, I'm honestly not a lot familiar with it, so I would not touch on this point. So I didn't have a lot of uh, um, uh, work experience with the AH, with the AH. Um, 
but in the AX now we have the adaptive power and sensitivity threshold and pieces coloring. So we'll, we'll look at that the spatial reuse and there are like two types of that and that that uh, that of course is integrated with the <coughs> excuse me the concept of pieces coloring. Uh, power management. Uh, power management is um, um, there are like many of them, and you know uh, we have um, um, ABSD, and like we have we have a couple of other like um, like um, um, legacy uh, power management uh, with, but none of them actually were like uh, efficient enough to allow the implementation of IoT devices on on Wi-Fi um, on a larger scale, um, especially power. Uh, uh, battery powered uh, IoT devices. Here with uh, with the you know with the uh, IoT in mind, uh, some enhancement has been added to the uh, AX to allow you know the integration of IoT devices over um, uh, over Wi-Fi six so or AX. So you have the enhanced version of TWT. Uh, you have you have also the enhanced microsleep. We will talk about both of them uh, in more details in um, upcoming videos. Um, if we jump here to the next slide, uh, this is a little bit of representation of like some of the characteristics that we were talking about. So in AX, like I said, we go all the way up to 1024 Quam, um, which with uh, with MCS 10 and 11, and the difference is the code rate. So the code rate is depends on like how many bits, how many information is being uh, sent uh, compared to the coding bits, right? So it's like a three over four is a three data bits compared to like one data bit of uh, coding. And five over six is like five data, bits compared to, you know, one um, uh, code bit. And you can see here the constellation. This is a, com uh, a comparison between MCS9 and um, MCS, uh, MCS11. So you can see the, um, you can see here, like how close the, you know, the points in the constellation are to each other. And, and this required like um, a much better built radios for the AX. You were talking better EVMs, lower noise uh, figures, um, and so on. Uh, this, is, this is the representation. Um, in the frequency domain, so the the, the carriers in the AX are um, the spacing between carriers from AC to AX have been cut uh, to the to uh, one over four. So in AC, the spacing between carriers was like three hundred and twelve point five kilohertz. Now that is cut down to um, seventy eight point one twenty five kilohertz. Um, and 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 if anyone remembers from like um, you know principles if like you know um the frequency domain and, and like Fourier transform doing a Fourier transform any compression in the frequency domain uh will result in an expansion in time and vice versa so it's like when we cut the spacing between the subcarriers to one fourth of the you know the legacy carriers that resulted in the quadruple of the um um, of the um, of the symbol time, and this is where this is where the symbol time, the difference in symbol time, like uh, between AC and AX came from. So you have the three point eight microsecond in um, in AC that uh, that being quadrupled to twelve point eight microsecond um, um, with a cyclic prefix okay, in AX. Uh, if you look at here that that uh, the number of uh, subcarriers in a 20 megahertz channel, so in AC it used to be um, you know 20 20 subcarriers, 26 subcarriers. Uh, uh, we're talking about data subcarriers. Now we moved up to 117 um, subcarriers because of how um, because of how close the subcarriers to each other. So now we can fit more into a 20 megahertz channel. Uh, thank you very much for listening. That's going to be it for now uh, for this video, and we're going to continue this. Hopefully, I'm going to continue this in a, maybe in a, um, um, on a, base of, a pace of like um, um, every two, maybe one or two days. Uh, so um, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this. And again, please, if you if I missed um, if I miss um, uh, understood anything or represented something that you think wasn't correctly presented, please let me know. Uh, so I can uh, correct that and um, yeah, for the audience and for myself as well. Thank you very much. Have a great day.